your request. The board may ask any questions they may have, and then anyone who wishes to speak to the proposal will be asked to come forward and voice their opinions. Each side will have 10 minutes to speak. Once your request is heard and the board's decision is rendered, you may leave the meeting. However, if you have questions for staff, please wait until after the meeting is over to ask them, or you may contact them at the office on the following day. Once public testimony and discussion of a particular item is concluded, the members of the board will deliberate and render their decisions. Members with a personal or financial interest in any request are required to recuse themselves from voting. All decisions by the Architecture Review Board are final. Any aggrieved parties may appeal a decision of the board to the City Council within 15 days. <coughs> Excuse me. Petitioners may also appeal the board's decision to circuit court within 30 days. We have five members present and it takes five votes to pass a motion. Because of the number of members present, if you'd like to delay your request, please let us know at the time your project is announced. Let me introduce the board members we have here today. The Reverend Willie Welch, David Payne, John Foshi and John Hayden. And our planning control staff is Christy Anderson, Paula Richardson, and Russell Stringer. Our first project for the night is Jedediah Grant, Old Cloverdale, Ellen Street. Welcome back. Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, my name is Jed Grant. I'm just returning to talk about the door. Um, you know, we had kind of gone through everything, all our changes last time, and uh, everything but the door was, was approved. So, we have um, we've gone with a six panel solid wood door instead of the fiberglass. I believe we had it, uh, approved a, or applied for a four panel last time, um, which we think this is, after speaking with Christy, we believe this is um, much more appropriate. on this door yes ma'am um, so it's it's going to be stained like a medium dark walnut to match the fence um, that we had proposed last time as well okay. you know What's, facing west that's not gonna be a real durable finish ma'am facing west that's not gonna no be a it, real durable finish. it's gonna require some upkeep as well All right. uh, I believe there was a rendering of the um, the door that I had there made is, for this. There okay. Is. We have a picture of it. With any luck, Paula will be able to put it up. <laughs> there we go. Keep going. I think it's the next one. Sideways, but yes. Yep. Sideways, but I can get it. I chopped off. Sorry. Uh, you said you were going to paint it or stain it? We're going to stain it. Any further discussion by the board? Is there anyone in the audience to speak to this project? May I have a motion then? Madam Chair, I move that we approve the um, as submitted. Second. All in favor? You're in luck. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you all. <laughs> You're very welcome. All right, project number two, Josh Husted of Old Cloverdale, 1924 Graham Street. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Good to see you all again. I was here last month uh, for a front door replacement, and we had discussed about the glass being not period specific. Um, on Christie's recommendation, I spoke with Marshall Millworks and uh, coordinating with her and John over there, uh, we got a replacement um, uh, invoice and proposal that would involve replacing the existing glass pane with a uh, roughly two foot by 46 inch, 716 inch, 
clear tempered glass pane uh, that would match uh, the, the house and the period. Um, a door, as pictured across the street, is the exact same, it's yeah. same, uh, same style. <clears throat> I have uh, contracted with them, and per the approval of the board, I'm going to have them uh, install it. Any discussion from the board? Anything from the audience on this project? Please note that there's also the addition of a privacy fence. I, I was going to ask if we had addressed that before. I don't I think we did. Have. I'm sorry. The, um, the fence, as you can tell, it may, it's a little shaded on the top picture on the left, but you can see it actually joins up to my neighbor's fence. It's mm -hmm. the same material. Obviously, hers has been weathered um, over a longer period of time, but it is uh, fitting with that. It's got the exact same eye line. It's the same material. It's six inch dog ear panel, similar to most of the privacy fences in the neighborhood. Um, and exactly matches. I have no plans to paint or stain it. You're just going to let it weather also, John? Yes, sir. Okay. Exactly. Just like the rest of them in the neighborhood. Yes, sir. There's no further discussion. I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move we approve the petitioner's request as submitted. I asked. Somebody. Okay. Thank you. Second? Second. All in favor? You're in luck again. Thank you. <laughs> Thank this you, ladies and gentlemen. This I appreciate really it. really good. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you very much. I was sort of surprised, too, but nobody said anything. Uh, Lisa Cooley, Cloverdale Idlewild. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Scott Gwynn. I'm talking on behalf of Lisa. Cooley. Cooley. Um, we're proposing to pour two strips of concrete to park a car on that will be completely invisible from the street. A couple of years ago, when her father was on her deathbed in the, on his deathbed in the house, we got a warning ticket. There are a lot of cars out there. Mm -hmm. And then just a couple of weeks, months ago, one of our guests got a ticket. I suppose you can't park on Norman Bridge Road, right? <clears throat> Ma'am? You can't park on Norman Bridge Road. Is no, there is, is no street yeah. parking at all. The parking pads are going to be on the Norman Bridge side, though. I mean, you'll be able to see the cars once you put the parking pads. It's for just for two cars, I understand that. You're going to put runners and then yeah. two, two parking spaces off of the driveway. Is that right? Yes. Now, is that going to be off of Norman Bridge Road or behind your house? It looks like from the sketch I'm it's looking at. It's going to be at, right there in the front yard. Okay, okay. Yeah, because I, I had two pecan trees in the front yard and one blew over back in June. <laughs> so, um, there it is. yeah. We don't believe the concrete will even be visible from the street. It's just <laughs> trying to comply with your laws and ordinances, whatever. And technically put, that would mean that someone is parking on concrete, even if it's just a strip, they're not parking in the grass, which is I think what they're trying to so yeah, people can get past, I think she, you'd explained to me that there were issues with getting in and out of the driveway if there were multiple cars and Norman Bridge being busy and that way someone can pull off and someone yeah, else can, and there's, can pull there's out. Yeah, three different uh, vehicles shifts of, in the house, you know, everybody works different shifts and we've been switching back and forth. Oh, I know. I get up. I have to get up every morning and pull out of the I driveway know. so my wife can go to work. I, I understand. I wish we had room to... And it's it's yes. real dangerous pulling out on Norman Bridge at certain times of the day. Is there, okay. Do you have something? Okay. Is there any comment on this project from the audience? <clears throat> Mr. Coven, are you expecting snow? 
<laughs> yes, it's colder than I thought. <laughs> My schedule got a little interrupted today. <laughs> the, uh, I'm Charlie Colvin with the Cloverdale Idlewild Association, the CIA, um, and we agree we shouldn't be able to see the concrete from the street, and uh, the CIA has no objections to the project. Any further discussion from the board? May I have a motion on this project then? Move to approve the plan as submitted. Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Amanda Ennis, Old Cloverdale, 1219 Westmoreland. Hi, I'm Amanda Ennis, and I want to put a small length of privacy fence um, near the back of my house to complete um, fencing the backyard based on the existing fencing that's already there. Actually, it looks like a pretty nice fence. <laughs> Yeah, I was taking pictures from my neighborhood and I've been working with some of my neighbors who have um, the existing fences that were nice on um, making sure that mine is similar to theirs. All right. Is there anyone in the Oh, well, I'm sorry. Is, does anybody on the board have a comment? Anyone in the audience speak to this project? No? I'll entertain a motion then. Chair, I move that we approve. Second. Okay. All right. It's been moved and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? Thank you. Thank you very much. James Weddle, Cottage Hill, 532 Clay Street. I hope I didn't completely miss your name. James, you got that right. Okay. <laughs> All good. Uh, James Weddle with the uh, Goat House Beer Garden, 532 Clay Street. Okay. Uh, what we're Proposing is a uh, exterior fence on the east side of the property. Uh, when we bought the property from uh, Stone River Development that built the uh, Heights apartment, they uh, essentially shaved the hill, um, part of their strategy to probably keep a smaller retaining wall down below us, <clears throat> which introduced a bit of a problem for us, which we're addressing now with a, uh, <clears throat> not a privacy fence, but that fence there. It's uh, pressurized, treated pine. It'll be painted with historical white, uh, some sort of acrylic. I'm not quite sure what finish, but uh, we are gonna use goat fence in keeping with our branding. Uh, and there will be goats someday. I'll come back someday and tell you about that. But that's, that's pretty much it. That's some um, fencing we put in the back as a test of what we might do. We found a pretty good uh, solution. It's galvanized steel from a a, a uh, tractor supply store, essentially. So. Any comments from the board on this fence? Sorry? I'm, oh, I'm sorry. It may be the only historically appropriate backyard fence we've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> goat hill, goat tree. It, it's, yeah. Well, it's exactly what people in the period of that house, it's like what they would have built That's in their interesting. backyard. Yeah. So it looks really good. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, yeah, we get a lot of comments about the Goat Hill, comp but that's actually not how we got to Goat House, but anyway, that's nice that it ties in. Is there anyone in the audience to speak to this project? Can I entertain a motion? Move to approve as submitted. Second. All in favor? Go, make your fence. Thank you. All right, thanks. Good job again. Next, we have Michael Panhorst from uh, Old Alabama Town. Thank you. I am Michael Panhorst, director of the uh, Landmarks Foundation. We operate Old Alabama Town. This is Wilbur Hill, who is an architect with Brown Studio. His uh, boss, Don Brown, is the chair of our Building and Grounds Committee, and Don 
is not able to be with us tonight, so uh, Wilbur has joined me here. Um, our proposal is to replace the roof on this uh, blacksmith shop from up in Elmore County uh, with uh, a new metal roof and um, I think that's the, the gist of the proposal here. We've got an example of the uh, 5V crimp metal roof uh, that uh, we propose to have a galvalume surface, which is um, essentially like, like a galvanized metal and provided the floor plan, the views of the place. And so that's, that is our request. Any the, comments from the board? I'm sorry. Just when you get to the final picture, you'll see that you can see skylight yeah. <laughs> through, the, through the existing roof. No doubt it needs a new roof. <laughs> comments from the board? What, what period uh, do you interpret this building at? It uh, is behind a building, the Ornaman Shaw House, that's essentially 1850s. Um, the building on the other side is 1870s, the Gallagher House. Mm -hmm. So it is uh, technically in the Ornaman Shaw complex. It's immediately adjacent to a Victorian house. So it's, um, you know, it is in, interpreted as mid-century. Oh, I'm sorry. I was speaking of the barn rather you than. Are. I'm sorry. Thank you. That's all right. um, but but um, this is a, a mid 19th century blacksmith shop. Um, in fact, uh, the write up here mentions it being a quote interpreted building. I think what that means is it's basically a reconstruction um, of the uh, the blacksmith shop from Elmer County. What you've proposed is probably the, the most common second generation roof on any outbuilding in Alabama. And it, it's, it's certainly what you'd see. I guess I would be the more concerned from an interpretation point of view that you'd be able to, to see the, the cedar shakes from below that you're going to leave them on there and put the tent on top of them because I don't, it would, it would not be appropriate to be looking up at plywood while you were talking to children about that period. Yeah. Um, we do not take many folks into the barn, not on, okay. on tours currently, but the plan is to remove the shakes and the spaced decking because of its deterioration and replace with spaced decking and an ice and water shield. So, in, in fact, you will not be able to look up, but in fact, um, uh, you, you will see spaced decking. The, the barn, though, you're not, you're not taking children upstairs. The lower part of the barn's not going to change. Right, and I'm sorry if I'm sounding confused because I'm thinking of these two different buildings and we're yes. talking about the blacksmith shop, yes. which is visible from, yes. from inside. Yes. Yeah, so when you look up, what you would see is the spaced decking. Um, and if you can see through that, you would see the ice and water shield. Okay. okay. Thank so you it's for not be clarification. Ply plywood or something like that. That's no. Okay. No. Any other comments from the board? Any comments from the audience on this project? I just want to clarify that um, interpreted building is just means that it's one that. That, that tours oh. go to versus one of your rental properties. Thank you. Only because it's come up before where we have seen properties that were interpreted buildings versus ones that were purely commercial um, and the level of, of um, kind of authenticity gets kicked up a little bit more for the, for that, that's what this board has done previously. <clears throat> Any comments from the board? Are your rafters still sound? Uh, I think there are several rafters that'll be replaced. The porch 
uh, roof rafters uh, will will pretty much be replaced right. in in kind. If there are no other comments, may I have a motion? I would move that we approve this project as presented. Second. I'll second that motion. All, right. All in favor? Thank you. Go and repair your roof, which looks like it really needs it. It does. <laughs> so the second roof is the one that I started talking about. We, we actually have two proposals here, and the second is for the barn. When I said barn, I was, um, and uh, that barn is behind the Ordem and Shaw house. Um, and as you can see, can, can be seen to some extent from, from the street. And our proposal, our request is the same to replace a severely deteriorated roof with um, metal 5V crimp with, uh, on top of spaced decking with ice and water shield. And there may be, uh, we anticipate replacing a few uh, rafters or beams in, in the process. It's in terrible shape, not just bad shape. Right, um, and the underside of it is not visible unless you go into the loft, and you do not go into the loft unless you have a hard hat. I mean, it is, it is not, we do not interpret the second floor of the, of the barn. Um, <clears throat> It's a great atmosphere in there right now, but <laughs> but it doesn't hold water. Literally. Yeah. Well, the building certainly has a nice style to it. it it's it, just. It does. It, I mean, I guess the uh, the photographs don't show how bad the condition keep, is, but it, it's keep very. Keep because the last photograph shows. It's a very charming it. building. Yeah. Oh, I see it now. Yeah, the pic from the loft, you can oh, definitely tell the roof Ooh. is done. Yep. So. Has, has been done. Yeah. <laughs> May I ask were you, uh, how you're funding this? Is this a grant of some type? From uh, we're raising private funds um, for this. I mean, it's obviously been in need of both buildings for some time. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we have a commitment for the roofing materials um, and a commitment to provide the, the labor and the, uh, the decking and so forth. So um, I believe that um, once this is approved, we can move pretty quickly to make these repairs in the next few months. It's our, our goal. <clears throat> Is your decking a tongue and groove? Uh... The decking is not tongue and groove. It's a spaced board. It's about a five quarter by six inch um, is what's there now, and that's what we're proposing to go back with. But it edge to edge? Um, with like loosely. Scantling. Uh, loosely. It's like scantling. Mm -hmm. Like what? Scantling, it's, it's spaced apart. Um, yes, but it'll be um, more like a pencil width or a. Uh, yeah, because that ice and water shield won't span anything. <laughs> right. Very nice. Is there any discussion on this project from the audience? More discussion from the board? And then I'll entertain a motion. I would like to make another motion that we approve this as submitted. I'll second again. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you. Jane Burris, Old Cloverdale, from Agnew Street. And please note that there is a handout at your places that shows option number five with an artist rendering on the back. So it's a two-sided piece of paper. We said to, we wanted options and you took us at our word. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but I do, I will say that 
the last option that's been added is the one that we would, that I would prefer. It's the one that I would like to spend time presenting. Okay. I, I did just notice sitting in the chair that I thought the copy of the survey of the property that shows dimensions of the apartment building and the width were included. And I noticed just a few moments ago, it's not in my packet. I have two copies here, if that would help you before we begin. But you can let me know if you need it. Um, my mother has owned this fourplex on Agnew Street for over 35 years. Uh, at this point, the driveway and much of the walkway has cracked and become dangerous. Knowing that repair is needed, we would like to take this opportunity to improve the property for our tenants and our neighbors. As you may be aware, Agnew is relatively narrow. It runs from Fairview to uh, the fire station to Magnolia Avenue. We currently have off-street parking for just one car. The drive along the side of the house running to the backyard is not wide enough for a car to get by any for any car to get down there. I don't think even the little electric cars yeah. could get through there, um, especially since a large pecan in the neighbor's yard has matured. Additionally, our property is 55 feet wide from edge to edge. The result is that our tenants must park on both sides of the street and in front of others' properties. We currently have two tenants over 80 years of age and would like to remove barriers to access by providing both of them as short and safe a path as possible. After much deliberation, as you can see from the proposals, you have before you our proposed changes for the drive, parking, and landscape at these apartments. You also have, since we have the luxury of having Melissa Tubbs in our apartment, she did an artist rendering of what she believes um, it would look like based upon the computer, the CAD drawing that we gave her. So that is our proposal. Any discussion from the board? I kind of like option two. Oh. That's where I guess it, in that Jane four, four parking spaces on the street. And the reason I like it is it seems like it saves more of the front yard. Um, now, the one you just gave us, option five, it looks like you're, you're going to have green space in, in there. We would. Yeah. Um, option five. Two cars could park further off the road than you'd have two basically just over the sidewalk, right? Correct. Okay. I tried to calculate the amount of green space, and I, I know y'all like 50%. Um, with that last, I didn't try with this one, but with this last option, I thought it came to about 38% if my calculations were correct. So which option well, you like the best? I, she likes this one. The addendum. It's on the other side. Yeah. I, I, think I thought from, right. from my numerous conversations with different individuals, I, I um, felt like that had the most likelihood for approval, <laughs> so, well, but I, I am. I think it's nice, Jane. It, what, uh, what, what is your paving material? We had planned to use concrete. Again, <clears throat> thinking of our Elderly. older. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. So everybody has their own parking space. Yes. Sometimes I, tenants have more than one car, but each apartment has one parking place. Well, how does the, how do the two center tenants get from their car? to the house without walking through the grass or, or whatever the planting in there is, the grass? Um, they, my plan is that we would begin with just grass there um, and they would just walk across the grass or just to the edge there at the drive and up and around. If it became obvious, you know, if the grass began to appear worn, then we might look at pavers well, down again, the road. If, you, if you're going back to your elderly occupants, and I don't know that they all are, but I mean, they could be. Um, right now, they're both 85 plus right. on the two downstairs apartments. <clears throat> and Do they would use the driveway and be right up close to their, can he, does he have that for the slide? 
the addendum. Uh, Paula, uh, <clears throat> was the supplemental drawing? Did we put that in the box? Might as well put the paper in, and then because <laughs> if they walk on the grass, they it's going to be a path. If they do, they may find it just as convenient, especially the person on the left, if you're facing the apartment, to get out their door <coughs> and just walk to the drive. It, I mean, if it were wet thick for all else, I mean, it wouldn't be a lot to just go back to the sidewalk and walk around. There's not any sidewalk on that side of the street. So there'd be Is there no sidewalk on that side? No. No, there's no, no sidewalk on that okay. side of the street. And, and in that last proposal, The, uh, all of the proposals, I tried to maintain that semicircle that has been in front of the apartment since the beginning, yeah. and that's one piece of concrete that has not cracked. <laughs> well, so I was trying to save the semicircle there. Jane, have you presented something before on this, and I just was not here. You said that you were sent a way to do other options? I mean, what was your oh, original proposal? I have not come before the board before. Oh, okay. okay. I, Christy has been kind enough to spend many hours with me and tell me what might, what very likely would not be accepted and to give me some places to go look at, some sites that I might look at and just to try to help walk me through this. She We've really deliberated this for more than 10 years. <laughs> we are just finally it's become dangerous. It's time to do something. Well, sir, you got to have some parking. I mean, you got four units and you, you, you got to have someplace other than Agnew for them to park because like you said, it's not a wide street. And one of, I didn't mention, one of those houses pretty much across the street from us has a brick wall right up against the curb. So that kind of can't so. park there. <laughs> Retaining wall. My preference from the things that we received in our packets was option two, but the option that you brought today, I like because it brings more of the yard all the way to the street. Agnew is a pretty residential looking street, and I like the fact that the grass comes all the way to the curb, more of the grass comes to the curb. Yeah, I'm not saying I didn't like option five. I, I've been actually staring at option two. Of the, I didn't like option three. That, okay kind of parking into the, that kind of took, again, I was kind of looking to see which one, you know, kind of kept, kept the most uh, front yard, but option fine is, you know, it looks nice. I mean, I know David has concerns about when you get out of those two middle cars. I mean, if you only walk on it once or twice a day, it's not gonna wear it down and then again. Uh, I mean, it looks good. Is there anyone in the audience to discuss this project with opinions about this project? I'm Darby Forrester and I represent the old Cloverdale Association. We reviewed this proposal at our meeting. Um, at our meeting, we only had the first four options. We did not see option five until after our meeting. Um, we did not feel that any of the four options presented um, would be acceptable. That is a small front yard and it, uh, we believe will take up much more of the, it's gonna be nothing but paved. It's gonna be a paved front yard in the first four options. Um, in the fifth option, the only thing that we saw, which was a day or two ago, we got an a email of the artist rendering. Um, I don't know how to scale that is. I don't think there's going to be that much green space. I think it's going to be basically all parking. It's hard to tell. We did not get to look at it and discuss it as um, an association because it was not in the original packet. Um, we feel that the existing drive, that if you kept that and put another strip on the other side, that would give you basically two driveways, which would allow for parking uh, for two of the um, residents, and the other two would continue to park on the street. That uh, fourplex has been like that ever since I moved in in 
um, when I was in fourth grade and the residents have parked on the street. So they know when they rent that it is parking on the street. Um, I have an email that I got from the resident who lives across the street, David Brewer. I was hoping he was going to be able to come tonight, but I don't like he's going to be able to. There's a copy for you, Jane. Um, he lives right across the street, and he is... Uh, David lives at 2415 Agnew. It's across the street from his house. Um, he said it appears to be required to build a large parking area in the front in the green space area. Um, while I emphasize with the property owners trying to make a parking space off Agnew, the plan of our review proposes to make the entire front yard green space area a large parking area. The area in question is too small for the proposal in my mind, in my opinion. There must be another way, such as making a smaller one or two car parking area to accommodate the property owners. And he lives across the street. So. Well, you know, the, the uh, in an effort to kind of move this thing forward here, it says you've got 41 feet to the street. And that part of uh, that uh, drive uh, that sidewalk in front <clears throat> is kind of um, odd looking. The, the one that's curved and a uh, half circle and it looks like it's got a little tiny bit of grass and a triangulated shape right there. But but do you if you go back to option one, you all, and if you had a a, a drive much like you were just saying from each side. And I mean, these these people are committed to have to park, um, you know, in a. Uh, they they're committed to have to back out into the street, aren't mm -hmm. they? So, is there a way to to take this green uh, strip that you have in front here, that's that's shown on option one, is 30 feet wide, and, and get two slightly uh, four slightly angled spaces? up near the front and maybe even rethink what this front uh, sidewalk would look like up close to the house so that the cars could get maybe a little closer to the house or, or maybe just the edges of them into that semicircular paved area there so that you could um, get four cars in and some landscaping out and, and you've got a 12 foot strip of concrete on either side, and, and you still don't have a lot of grass, but you've got some, perhaps. Um, and I, I may be drawing this out of scale right here, but wouldn't be the first time. <laughs> Something that could. I sent this. To, I sent this first the day before. I sent this. Okay. I, I don't. It may not be enough. It may not be enough real estate there okay. to do that. I do know that sometimes you have to get in a car and drive on the grass and see if it'll work. You can back in and out. But if you had something, you know, where you came in on either side and you had two cars and all of this in the center was grass, um, could that work for you? Could that work for the homeowners association? Um, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I really don't understand what you were saying. I mean, one of our, um, well, it kind of goes back to what you were saying. I mean, to have a, 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 a strip of concrete on each side, but. Well, I, I mean, we were, th what we were looking at was this. I understand. Having, yeah, yeah, these yeah. two and then not this. So right. that would give you two, two parks right there. And the other two would be on the street. We have other apartment buildings in our neighborhood that don't provide off street parking for all of the residents. They park on the street and we wouldn't want to start a precedent where you just pave over the front yards, so everybody's on off street parking. I mean, I know it's an issue when these apartments were built and everybody had cars, but I mean, that's, that's part of the neighborhood. And like Mr. Hayden, I've spent many a day moving cars in and out of a single driveway. I do it every day. Yeah. 
But option five is still on the table? No. The board did not look at it, did not have an opportunity to look at it before the meeting. We call, we call a minor recess now while every architect on the board takes the site plan and kind of sketches. A design, design charrette. A design charrette at the meeting. Is there anyone else in the audience who has comment on this project? Hi, I'm um, Melissa Tubbs, and I am one of the tenants in the building. Um, number one, I don't believe that it will be a paved over front yard. And with the landscaping in the last, um, presentation that was, uh, given, uh, would greatly improve the looks of the front yard compared to what it is now with the broken concrete and no bushes, no landscaping whatsoever. Plus, I think that safety has to kick in at some point when you're thinking about the number of cars that are parked on that street. Um, I, I, I would hate for an emergency vehicle have to get down the street with the number of cars parked on both sides of the street. Um, Part of the problem with parking on the street, um, if you go around the corner on Magnolia Curve, there are multiple apartment buildings, but they have plenty of space in front of their building to park. We don't. Two cars um, right now can park in front of the building on the curb. There's one driveway. Otherwise, this, the house that backs up to our building um, has tall, big bushes and trees right next to the curb. The house directly across the street from our building has big bushes right next to the curb. And the house next to it, Jane's already mentioned, has the retaining wall. So the amount of parking spaces on the street is about as limited as parking on the property. Um, I, I realize I'm a bit prejudiced here, um, but I, I do think there's more concern than just a paved over front yard. I don't think it will be a paved over front yard. The trees and bushes will add tremendously to the uh, attractiveness of the front of the building. Um, and I'm concerned about safety as much as anything because I see some of the college kids and older than college kids that speed down Agnew um, and it's a wonder they haven't crashed into any number of the cars that uh, park there. And Agnew is not a very wide street. Thank you. I have another scheme, Madam Chairman. <laughs> All right. So you have another design? You think that has any potential? <laughs> the dark gray is two, two spaces on each side. Planning in here, uh -huh. planning in there, planning in there. Everybody gets out of that car and goes up. All right, where, where are the parking places? One, two, three, four. Okay, and then we we'll leave the... About 18 feet of uh, grass. Uh -huh. There's 18 to 20 feet in the middle. <laughs> this is not an easy problem to solve, obviously. Any, many, many, many. Yeah. <laughs> David, David, you explain. Now, she knows I had a good uh, mentor in my architectural past. Make sure it's not billable hours. <laughs> Make sure it's not billable hours. <laughs> now, Bill would have never done that. Two, two spaces, two spaces, grass in the middle. 
delay it so we can five foot sidewalk if they want to go into radius yeah. right here because try to get rid of all this stuff plant that big area plant that big area plant this area right here and then you know you've got i think a pretty good bit of green space but what do i know but i think you've got as much or more than in this other scheme particularly if you do away with that business right there and i think it's I would, because it's just... Oh, now there's a door here. The door. Well, then, then, then that won't work. Okay, so you've got to... Yeah. It's four doors in a row. Okay, so you there's have to do something like... Mm -hmm. You might do something like, you know, okay. something that would get you into the door okay. right there. But you'd still have some space to pay. I mean, some, some space to plant. Okay. But, uh, you know, I mean, but, but the homeowner, you know, told them, I don't like that. Or, well, you would... Oh, okay, I'm sorry. This Not the CIA. Hey. Sir. Hey, so, like well, Madam, I mean, Madam Chair, it's not a it's not a totally. Ma'am, uh, I would uh, two things. Just a reminder: the board, this board, does not solve safety problems. Yes. Um, it's a design yes. issue, and that if you are considering option five or <clears throat> a new sketch by David, I would recommend that you delay it so it, it can be reviewed prior to the I, I was about to ask if Jane, do you want to have a chance to look at that, maybe draw it up? Well, uh, yeah. I still like option two, but I'm certainly open to, I'm sorry. Well, look at option seven. I will. I, as soon as, <laughs> I saw you try to draw it, and I do think it's got, I'd like to well, see I'm trying it. to draw all of my first game. But, but we still would need to make that public, so that Right. That option is not on the table tonight. I understand. No, but it might be good to know if, if this little group is semi workable. Yes. yes. The two, I put two on each side, John, and green in the right. middle. Right, right. And then green. Green know, in the middle. Right. And then. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I'm, that's what I'm looking at here. Conserve well, whatever you do, it's going to be an improvement to what's already there. So, right. So, I understand we have to try to. Uh, Please. Well, it seems to me that what we need to do is delay the decision until the Cloverdale Association has had an opportunity to look at both option four and option five, and we can make a decision at the next meeting, because we know, Ms. Burst, you want to come back. We know That's you right. do. I will be back. <laughs> right. So we need a motion to right. delay? Will someone make a motion? I move that we delay or pass on this until next month to give Ms. Burris an opportunity to present option five officially and develop option six, which was been developed here at the meeting. And uh, next time we'll, we'll get her an answer on something one way or another. Second. Second. All in favor? Yeah. All right, we'll see you next you. month. Yes, ma'am. Janie Wall, Cloverdale Eyewall. Janie, I didn't see you back there. Hey, Chairman Brown, Reverend Welch, and David and the two Johns. I'm Janie Wall. I'm a landscape architect, and I have done a proposal for um, 3179 Norman Bridge. It's a quadruplex that has been bought by a group, an acquisitions group. And um, there is a drainage problem in the back that I have resolved. Um, it, um, so we need to put a swale in. They were unaware it was historic property when they cut the trees without permission and they have really apologized for that. So um, I talked with Russell and he had suggested that we go with uh, three tulip poplars which I have lined across the back of the, um, of the lot. And the parking will come right off Hadley. And there are four slots. And there's room to, you know, back up and turn around. It would be the traditional B base, which works so well here, you know, at, with the prairie mud. And then it would be topped with the brown shot, uh, which is, you know, better in keeping with, um, with, our, with our look. And um, the edging is railroad ties, um, which will work to be able to keep the, uh, any gravel or whatever out of the, uh, the grounds. I'm also suggesting that we do a slight screen with three U's 
Um, I just suggest those at seven gallons because my client's budget. Also, I suggest that we add a cedar, um, which is a, um, an eastern cedar called a Brody cedar, which also would be a great screen. They tend to grow up a little bit straighter and narrower than the other cedars, and there's plenty of room for that. Um, the only other things I'm suggesting is we have to do a, a small repour on the back. We keep the same footprint, basically, of the concrete, but there's water that's going under the foundation, looking at it on the left-hand side, and that way that, that with the surface swell could correct that drainage issue. And, um, and I just have um, some, you know, stepping stones, nice size stepping stones going from the parking area um, to the rear of the apartments, which would uh, be serviceable and then would allow the drainage well to work easily also. I also have colors. Um, I just passed those down, Janie. Oh, you did? Okay, yeah. great. Um, the... The, the, pale, the pale green is the house, the cream color is the trim, and the dark brown is the door. Okay. And then we're proposing a charcoal architectural shingled roof. And as you saw, it's, a, it's kind of a battleship gray right now, mm -hmm. and the roof actually has a brown tone, and the trim is white, which makes all the unfortunate choices show up more so anyway that's um so i do believe this would be a you know a big improvement i will say that the, i do believe that the two stump far stumps will have to be taken care of um but the one cedar stump probably would remain there's a fabulous i've got it drawn on there fratinia serralata that uh, really catches your eye where near where they cut the cedar so that I mean, that's the, I guess the only icing on the cake is that there is a really good existing plant on the, in what was the original cedar lineup. Why leave the cedar stump, Miss Wall? Well, they just, they just last a long time and you could put pots or anything you want on it. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, it's kind of, I mean, a lot of people leave uh, stumps that, you know, are slow rotters and things like that in the landscape, or obviously it could be taken out. Jenny, what about, your, and, and you may not know because this has to do with the building, what about these two uh, infill porches on the end of the building with the arched uh, openings? Do you know how they're planning to paint those? Um, I know that they want to move forward, so if we say, let's don't use the trim color there, which maybe, I didn't think about that till we were all here together, and uh -huh. I thought, well, it'd be better for that to be solid and then just the, you know, the doors and the windows to use the trim. So that would be probably better to paint that, and I'll go ahead and note that. All we right. could paint those in the house color. Right, the body color. Okay, the body color. Thank you, thank you. Just to confirm, you. since you're leaving the cedar stump, that cedar tree didn't have to be cut down in order to put this parking area in the back, did it? It, it was a mistake. Yeah, it was a they, big one. And I just, you know, I, and I'm not, it's not at you, Ms. Walls, I'm just venting because I live in this neighborhood and those trees have been there since long before anybody in this room were born. Um, but. I mean, I'm not going to let that detract from my decision about, you know, what you, it, very good plan. I, I, right, I've looked you. it over, <laughs> um, but, you know, I understand that the owner is from Texas, and if the Texas guy doesn't know the rules around here in Alabama and Cloverdale, he needs to learn them before he comes in and sends somebody in with a chainsaw. Right. They said they had concerns about the roof. I did not see the property before they cut the trees, so I don't, I don't know what, that's just what I was told. I understand. I understand. All right. Is there anyone from the audience to speak to this project? Charlie? Charlie Coleman with the CIA. 
and uh, uh, we really think they're doing a good job of cleaning up the back of that building. That uh, parking area has been kind of a uh, shambles over the years. Uh, color on the building's fine with us, but we would like everything to be the same color. Those inserts and the, and the added porches, the closed-in porches, uh, so that they would blend in. Um, last time we talked about this, we mentioned that we've, we'd really like them to put a, a roof back on that front entryway, if that's possible, but that's not part of the petition. And as far as the stumps are concerned, we'd prefer that they would all go away. Uh, having one out there as, a, as kind of a little addition, like a deck, I'm not sure how many renters would take advantage of that. Um, uh, and I don't know about its placement, but we prefer to see all the stumps gone. Well, plus that in past experience, if you're walking through the backyard, and it's, it's a nice space, but it's dark. Sometimes you don't see a stump, and sometimes that can cause, it can be, it can be a safety hazard also. But those are our thoughts. All right. Any other discussion from the board? All right, if not, do you think we can, can craft uh, a motion on this project? <laughs> John cannot make this motion because he is still mad about the tree. I've been in, I'm good. And again, Ms. Walt, that was not directed at you. I wish the owner were here. I'd really like to direct something at him or her, I don't know. Um, I move that we approve the plan as submitted by Ms. Wald, the, uh, with the exception that all stumps, including the cedar stump, be ground. Okay. Um, and if necessary, work with Mr. Stringer concerning any landscaping. I think you said you have talked. Have you talked with Mr. Stringer about this? Yes. Okay. All right. So I move that we approve the plan as submitted <clears throat> with the exception that any stumps uh, left from the calling of the trees be ground and removed. A second. All in favor? All right. Thank you, Janie. Okay. Thank you. Yes, you Thank brought you. order out of chaos there. <laughs> Here's your sample, Cullis. Why didn't the young Christmas. guy come back? Mm -hmm. He didn't want to come back and talk to us? Uh, Kayla and Jesse Jordan, Old Cloverdale on Westmoreland. Hi. Hey. I'm Kayla Jordan. Um, I'm requesting for approval after the fact for paint colors and a shutter replacement on my house. Um, it was a horrendous looking, um, partially gray um, house and I painted it blue and then my father built the shutters. And I did not know I had to come to y'all. I'd lived there for 10 years and no one's ever told me. Ms. Jordan, it's really blue. It's really, really blue. It's really dark. It's really bright. Is this close to anything on our pilot? <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Is that the pilot? Okay, I hadn't seen it so long. I know we changed this stuff. Is that the new group? I'm, get, I'm getting the age, I gotta get it right with my cheaters or take off the cheaters. Generally, you think of painting the darkest or the brightest color on your house on the smallest piece. So if you wanted to use this blue, painting the windows or the door, or the windows, the window mountains and the door, the bright color would be great, rather than painting the body of the house that color. Further comments from the board? I agree with you, Madam Chairman. That's very, very blue. Um, 
Miss Jordan, did you hire a painter to do this work? Um, this yes. Work? I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Any comments from the audience on this project? Darby Forrester representing the Old Clover Dell Association. Um, it was a horrible gray that was peeling. And it looks this, dirty, I remember. It looks very dirty. <laughs> um, this does look a whole lot better. However, it's not um, historic colors, or, and we feel it should be within the historic framework of the colors. And, you know, the shutters look real nice. Um, you know, I guess you could say shutters aren't, you know, permanent. They can be re removed pretty easy. Um, easily so um, but I know that they're still they're not in the um, they're not, those aren't the type of shutters that you would put on a house like that I'm seal champion and I've been part of old Cloverdale for most of my life and I'm going to tell you that that house looks the best that it has in 30 years. And I actually looked at that house to buy it about 30 years ago before I settled, and my husband and I settled on two more pieces of property in Old Cloverdale. Um, how, I have a problem with the fact that she was not welcome to the neighborhood by somebody from the Old Cloverdale Association. She was not told by real estate people that there were certain um, colors, and I'm seeing at least one color that's very close to what her house is painted. That house has been taken care of since she's been there better than it has been since I've been across the street. So I would love for you to consider the fact that it is beautifully done, well-maintained, and a positive to our neighborhood. I would just say for the board, the color palette is kind of the lowest common denominator of paint colors. Nothing wild, nothing flashy. Um, it is within your purview to approve a different color. I would also let the, no the board know, with the exception of this year, for the last five or six years, we have sent postcards to all property owners notifying them that they are located within a historic district. So. We, I did real estate classes for a while and they stopped asking me to come. We have tried to do what we could to get the word out. Um, we don't know when property changes hands, that's handled by the county. So if anybody has any suggestions on how we can do that better, please feel free to let me know. Christy, is it possible to approve the painting of the house this color, but say that it can't be repainted this color? That if it was painted again, that it needed, we, yeah, we have done that. Um, it wasn't paint, but we had a situation where someone installed a metal roof without permission, but because the condition of the house was so bad, the, the board approved the roof to preserve the house, but stipulated <clears throat> that if it ever had to be re-roofed, it could not be roofed again with a metal roof, that it, it would not be considered an approval that could be a replacement in kind. Okay. Yes. Hi. Um, I live on Westmoreland as well, um, and I have lived there for about four years. Um, I just moved back. Um, and when I lived there prior, I will say that entrance, like when you turn from Boltier mm -hmm. onto Westmoreland, did not look great. If you come at it from uh, College Street, it's a beautiful street. Mm -hmm. And really, I think most people access Westmoreland through Boltier mm -hmm. to turn there. And um, I think 
the improvements to this house and the house across really have, when I came back, I was like, wow, this is a really major improvement. And I really have a huge respect for, you know, historical authenticity, and that's one of the reasons why I chose Old Cloverdale. But I do think that it looks nice, it looks neat, and it's really kind of made that entrance onto Westmoreland um, much nicer, and it looks like a much nicer street to live on and more in keeping with the other streets and just the level of upkeep of the homes. Thank you. And if the board wanted to stipulate that the house could not be repainted that color, we could record a one page decision with the deed so any subsequent owner would know that because it would show up in the title search. <clears throat> Then, are you asking for a motion yet? Yeah. I ask for a motion. All right, okay. <laughs> then, based on that comment, Ms. Anderson, let me make the following motion that we approve this paint color because it's uh, part of all of the significant improvements that have been made to the property and only because of that. And that we stipulate that if the house is ever repainted, it cannot be painted that color and that uh, anyone wishing to paint their house must still comply with the uh, palette of colors that have been approved previously for a long, long time as acceptable uh, in this neighborhood. Second. I second. Anything about the shutters? Which is also a violation, I understand. I thought I saw that, but I, I was busy doing landscape work up here. Um, well, I so will say, I may have missed I will that say part. this about the shutters, that usually a solid shutter is something you would put on a commercial building. But solid shutters began to be used on ranch houses about the time your house was built. Um, they fit the windows. If you closed these shutters, they would actually fit the windows. So while they may not be my favorite thing, I think they're marginally all right. Okay. Was there objection to the color, John, or to the shutters themselves? I just discussed, you know, the, the style itself mm -hmm. yeah. might not be in, keep, in keeping with the house. You uh, could I understand that, that you know, we're, we're kind of guessing when this house was built so that they may have actually started coming in. So would, would those shutters be less? This is not a part of the motion. This is just a comment. Would those shutters be less um, rustic looking if they were painted white, the color of the window, or another color instead of the? I actually think the brown sort of tones the blue down some. It does, and I think it matches the front door kind of. Yeah. It looks like it's close. Well, there I you go. am. I'm, I'm From sorry. the photograph I'm looking at, it looks like it mm -hmm. kind of matches. It does. It looks I'm like in the process good. of stripping that door to match those setters, yes, sir. So you're going to match it. Okay. So, yes, I, did so I, I have no comment about the shutters <laughs> in my motion. All right. So, Willie, you don't have to second it again. All right. So we good? All, All right. in favor? All in favor? That's the first. Yeah. That's the first. Thank you. <laughs> so, so. All right, Rob Swinney, who I believe is coming about a swimming pool. Hi, good evening. Rob Swinney, representing Blue Haven Pools with Wesley Shearer, property on East Cloverdale Park. I just want to build a swimming pool and backyard. And Submitted several pictures of the condition of the property now versus the condition of the property when we complete it. It's a little bit of a slope in the backyard. We're working with that slope with the elevations of the pool and the decking area around it. Also keeping in mind the distance that's required to be away from the home for structural stability and also away from the property line, giving them a good five plus foot clearance. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's it, sorry. Thank you. It's very nicely designed, I think. Yeah. Does anybody have any comments? No, on the absolutely no tree problems. Is it, Russell? Is there any trees in? The, are there any trees in that backyard? No. Not from what I understand, uh, there were only some shrubs that were no. some removed before I was invited to this project. So. Any comments from the from anyone in the audience about this pool project? 
Any further comments from the board? I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve as submitted. Second. Second. All in favor? Thank you. Good looking pool. It Thank is good looking pool. Blue Haven Pools. Ben <laughs> Blanchard, Cottage Hill like Annex, Gulf Wade Street. You have another handout for this one as well. Um, there was a slight revision to the drawings that were submitted, which I believe pertain to the chimney. Yes? Yes, yeah. I did. Hey, I'm Andy Graydon. I'm here on behalf of Ben. Um, uh, work with Pfeffer Road. We did the drawings for Ben on Winter Place. Um, so what we're looking at is um, on that military retreat side, looking at changing the roof line of the back L addition to the house. Um, Ben's looking at putting a bathroom um, in that area. And um, kind of our idea when we started this was we wanted to return uh, the first two pieces of the house, uh, which are kind of the Italianate segment that's in the middle. And then there's um, kind of a second empire addition that was done on the front. Um, we wanted to return those areas in the interior kind of uh, to their original use. And so we kind of put a lot of the service stuff, um, bathroom and a kitchen in the back there. So. And just I'll add this in here because I, I realize it's not on the drawings. Um, I, I submitted new ones because the chimney is going to have to be modified because of the ridge line raising up. Okay. Um, and if I need to do this in a separate meeting, I can. But there's another chimney that uh, Ben is looking at getting to be wood burning again. And we're going to wind up having to rebuild it and make it about eight inches deeper. It's the, there's actually a photo of it uh, that y'all had just a second ago. It's on the southeast corner of the house. Uh, it's an image. Um, so it's, oh, it's not in this packet. It was in those other photos, okay. different PDF. But. Did the historical commission sign off on these? Uh, we kind Either. of agreed in principle when we met. Okay. Um, and I sent them to Chloe um, yesterday. Okay. And I have yesterday was a holiday for them. So. <clears throat> oh, okay. Well, she responded to me, but she didn't say whether or not okay. they had approved them. But um, this is kind of our, I don't know, probably like the fifth or sixth iteration of this um, addition at the back of the house. So this is a lot more minimal than what we were originally planning. Christy, can we consider alterations to change to the chimneys now? I, don't, I didn't see it on the proposal. Is that something we can... Um, I don't think that's a significant alteration. It doesn't change the design. Right. I mean, raising the height of it is to address needing to be, was it two feet above the roof at a 10 foot radius or something? Yeah, there's a little note up there kind of describing exactly what it is we need to do to it. Yeah, I, I don't, that, that to me doesn't alter the, how it's, how it's going to look. And then there's the, our second piece is that the historical commission still has to sign off on it. So okay. if anything looks super funny about the proportion of it. Just want to make sure someone didn't come rolling in here and say we did something we shouldn't have. I'm sorry. I really like I'm the lawyer on the board. Yes. <laughs> I really I'm not like the architect. This. And I like the fact that it's, that what you're doing that's new is quieter than the original house, which does have a lot of stuff going on on it. And I think it's, it's um, very, very carefully done, very handsomely done. And I like the, the way you worked the Italian and the uh, Second Empire stuff together on this. We architects always like our stuff to show up, you know, <laughs> and it's hard to be less important than what's there sometimes. Anybody from the audience to speak to this project, or have you all fallen asleep in your chairs? Anyone on the board to speak to this project? 
If so, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Chair, I move that we approve as submitted. Second. Can we do as presented? As presented. Thank you. Yes. In a Second. Including the chimney change. Second yes. that too. <laughs> what he said, second. All right. <clears throat> Can I have a vote? All in favor? Opposed? Yes. Now, you know, if the commission wants things changed from this, you'll have to come back again. Yeah. What are you? Did Carol make her announcement at the beginning? Carol, no, she did not make her announcement at the beginning. <laughs> uh, I wanted Carol to sit through the entire, I forgot about Carol, and I wanted her to sit through the entire meeting. Carol, I'm so sorry. Thank you, Ms. Brown. <laughs> I'm Carol King. I am one of the commissioners on the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, and we, I wanted to invite you um, to our um, award ceremony that we will be having at our next meeting on Tuesday, May the 8th, right here in the city council chambers at 530. Um, they are the um, 2018 Historic Preservation Awards. And this year we have nominees from residential projects and overall restoration. Um, the reintroduction of detail into a residential project, also for craftsmanship, and the Robert G. Daniels um, Lifetime Achievement Preservation Award will also be announced. Um, also, next Tuesday evening at City Council here uh, in the chambers, um, a proclamation has been submitted to, Ms., uh, to Mayor Strange declaring May as Historic Preservation Month in Montgomery. So that will be presented next week, too, at 5 o'clock. Thank you. Thank you. And you all will be getting invitations in the mail to that event as well. They went out today. We, Drop it. One second. Hey. One second. Are there any additions or corrections to last month's minutes? No. All right. They are approved. Now drop that. Now. There. There we go.